So in current electricity, potentiometer is one of the expected five marks questions. Uh, in uh, in the potentiometer, there are two questions. One, how do you compare the EMF of two given primary cells? That is one part. The other part is that how do you find the internal resistance of the given primary cell? So first we will discuss the first part of it. Before <coughs> discussing, let's see. This is the photograph of the potentiometer. So potentiometers may be consisting of one wire, or four wires, or ten wires. More is the length of the wire, more is the sensitive of the potentiometer. So first, let us talk about the principle of potentiometer. So potentiometer principle says that when the constant current is passing through a wire of uniform area of cross section then the potential drop across any two points is directly proportional to the length of the conductor now so what are the <coughs> conditions here first of all we are sending the constant current so that is the first point next we are considering the uniform area of cross section these are the two conditions now we know that according to ohm's law v is equal to i times r now we also know that resistance is directly proportional to l and inversely proportional to area of cross section and this is i okay now r is directly proportional to l by a r r is equal to the proportionality constant is known as specific resistance l by a this specific resistance is indicated by rho now i can replace this r by rho l by a now if you observe this equation potential is equal to i times specific resistance times l by a now we are considering that a uniform area of cross section therefore it is constant now when we are sending constant current i is also constant specific resistance for any material is constant therefore i rho by a all the three are constants therefore v is directly proportional to l so in this way we can explain the principle of potentiometer remember the principle of potentiometer is that the potential difference is directly proportional to l when constant current is passing through it and if it is of if the wire is of uniform area of cross section so v is directly proportional to l is the principle of potentiometer now so far as the first part is concerned let us draw the circuit diagram to compare the emf of two cells so to compare the emf of two cells we must have one auxiliary cell whose emf is e here we have one key one milliameter or ammeter to see that the constant current is passing through suppose if the value of current is changed with the help of this variable resistance you can make it constant so that is the use of this rheostat and this circuit is called the auxiliary circuit now we are interested in comparing the emf of two primary cells so here this is one primary cell whose emf is e1 and this is another primary cell whose emf is e2 now a two way key will be here
and from this we attach the galvanometer and the jockey of the galvanometer is to be gently tapped on the wire of potentiometer so <coughs> this circuit uh, is useful to compare the emf of two primary cells now a question a conceptual question can be asked when we keep the <coughs> galvanometer if the null point is not obtained what probable errors the student would have committed while doing the experiment so now the very first thing is that all the terminals positive terminals must be connected to one end of potentiometer so here this auxiliary cell positive terminal and then the cells whose emf are to be compared should also be connected to <coughs> a end only that is first point the second is that the value of this e must be definitely more than e1 and e2 e should always be greater than e1 and e2 if it is not there then the potential difference what is the main idea behind this the potential drop from this auxiliary cell if it is equal to <coughs> the potential or emf uh, of this cell then automatically no current passes through the galvanometer so <coughs> then we will get the null point in the galvanometer so <coughs> if e1 is greater than e then you cannot obtain the null point within the bridge so these are the two probable errors that a student can commit now uh, what is the procedure so in this first of all after putting the connections we will have to gently tap the galvanometer <coughs> by inserting one key here now if you are inserting this key means this cell is in the circuit suppose at the length l1 the uh, this null point is obtained in the galvanometer so e1 is directly proportional to l1 or e1 is equal to some constant times l1 now we take out this key and we will insert the key here and again we obtain the null point this time suppose if the null point is obtained at l2 then e2 must be equal to k times l2 now with the help of suppose if you divide these two equations e1 by e2 will be l1 by l2 as l1 and l2 are known values for us through the practicals or through the experiment therefore you can compare the uh, emf of these two cells <coughs> so this is the first part of the activity now how do you compare or how do you find the internal resistance of the given cell with the help of potentiometer the circuit the principle remains same of course now the circuit there is a slight change in the circuit diagram now here we keep the auxiliary circuit in the same one rheostat and then battery ammeter and key so <coughs> second in the second uh, this one we will have to keep this e and then across that we'll take one resistance box and we will have another key here and from this galvanometer and then jockey so when we take out this key when the galvanometer is tap on the wire of the potentiometer suppose if l1 <laughs> is the length 
then we can say that E is directly this let us consider that this is E and this is E1 so E1 is directly proportional to L1 now after that what we do we keep this key also closed then we obtain the potential difference not EMF I'll just explain the potential difference and the EMF at that time suppose if it is L2 then we can say E by V is equal to L1 by L2 now we should differentiate the potential difference and EMF so EMF of any battery can be defined as the terminal voltage between the <coughs> positive and negative terminals of the cell when it is under the open circuit that means no other electrical appliances or no other electrical elements are connected across it then the potential difference measured is known as EMF what is potential difference suppose if it is connected with any other electrical elements in the second case we are connecting this resistance box or this external resistance along with this E therefore uh, there is some internal resistance through that internal resistance the current is drawn when current is drawn I times R will be the potential drop across this cell then we know that this V the potential difference now is nothing but the EMF of the cell minus I times the internal resistance where small r is indicating the internal resistance now this V is equal to E1 minus I I means E1 by R plus R remember internal resistance is always connected in series with the external resistance times R now if you take VR plus V small r is equal to E1 capital R plus E1 small r minus E1 small r so these two now can be cancelled now our aim is to calculate the value of internal resistance so let us keep VR on this side and write R times E1 minus V now small r is equal to R times E1 by V minus 1 we have already calculated this E1 by V through the experiment that is L1 by L2 so small r internal resistance value can be obtained by taking the values of r whatever the resistance that is kept in the resistance box and l1 when the key is open of this when this key is open the null point where it is obtained that is if you consider l1 when key is closed then the null point that is l2 then by virtue of this formula you can find the value of internal resistance of a given cell so potentiometer is used to compare the emf of two cells and it is also used to <laughs> find the internal resistance of the <coughs> given primary cell now why do we consider the potentiometer as an ideal voltmeter so we have ideal voltmeter must have infinite resistance if a galvanometer when it is connected with very high resistance in series then we say that setup is called voltmeter now ideal voltmeter must have infinite resistance so infinite to have the infinite resistance uh, now what why do we uh, prefer why do we consider the potentiometer as the ideal voltmeter because we measure the EMF of the cell when there is no current passing through the uh, galvanometer <coughs> therefore as it is passing through the galvanometer as as no current is passing through the galvanometer or at the null point we are measuring emf of the cell therefore we can assume as if 
infinite resistance is there in the circuit. We know that uh, when R is more, the current passing through that resistance will be lesser. So, if the R tends to infinity, the practically I tends to zero. So, in while using galvanometer, it is not possible to connect such a high resistance at which the zero current is passed through. But with the help of potentiometer, we can make the galvanometer, uh, the current passing through the galvanometer is zero. Uh, therefore, we can consider as if uh, a high resistance which is tending to infinity is connected in the circuit. Therefore, this potentiometer is also known as the ideal voltmeter. So, potentiometer, we can increase the sensitivity of the potentiometer by increasing the number of wires. Now, the question can be asked, what is potential gradient? The potential gradient is nothing but the potential drop per unit length is only potential gradient. So, some numerical may be attached to that that we will discuss in the part of uh, numericals this is one of the expected theory questions in cbs examination